presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport. In the show, it is playoffs time. David Hackett is the new soul of Milan. Manukar Markoishvili is chasing his dreams. History passes through the hands of Georgios Printezis. Jonas Masulis is trying to steal a place in the final four. The MVPs from game one and two and the top three plays. The first week of the Turkish Airlines Euroleague playoffs provided plenty of thrills and excitement on the court. In order to overcome the last obstacle before the final four, a team needs to be able to move up through the gears. As coach David Blatt told us before the tenth series between EA7 Emporio Armani Milan and his Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv. The best of five series is a, is a very different kind of uh, competition, physically, mentally, psychologically. You should have a, a plan for the game in front of you, but at the same time, you should also have several plans for how you want to progress as, as this series changes according to, to each game. You have a chance to see your opponent and in, in a very short time to uh, make adjustments. The mental preparation is, is, is a big part of your, of your day. The tactical side has to do with your opponent. You know, are they better than you are? And that generally requires you to change more. The fun thing is, is that you, you challenge yourself and uh, you learn a lot about uh, yourself and your team when you're doing it. After seven months of hard work, it was now crunch time. You could cut the tension and pressure with a knife, while the Mediolanum Forum was painted red like never before. The hosts were solid in the paint, with Samardo Samuels, and with a flurry of triples, they took control of the game. The visitors responded when Sophocles Korzanitis came on, and the half ended with the Israeli team just five points behind. In the second half, Milan extended their lead, and with two minutes left to play, they were leading by 13 points. But you can never rule out Coach Blatt's guys. Ricky Hickman's triple reignited Maccabi's hopes, cutting the deficit to 84-80 with 31 seconds remaining. Then Tyrese Rice drove for a layup and the additional free throw to put Maccabi in front, 86-87. Milan had the last possession of the regulation time, but Keith Langford's first attempt was rejected into the stands by Alex Tyus. But Langford drew a personal foul with just 0.7 seconds to go. He sank the first, but the second free throw was short and the game went to overtime. With the momentum now in their favour, the Yellows controlled the additional five minutes. Maccabi's comeback was completed by the fantastic Ricky Hickman, who scored 14 points in the last seven minutes. The visitors celebrated an improbable victory, 99-101, grabbing the first point in the series. Unbelievable, man. We down seven points with a minute left. Fought. We just fought. I mean, I don't know what else to call it. We just fought to the end and got the win. With his performance index rating of 36, Ricky Hickman not only earned the B-Win honour of the playoffs round one, but also settled the new playoffs record of the decade. Hickman scored 26 points, without mistakes from long distance and from the free throw line. He also added four rebounds, a steal, three assists and ten fouls. Fourth quarter, we, we did a really good job of being patient and just, you know, maximising our possession. Just kept fighting and we came in, we got a good win. Real good win. Big win. Yeah. 
EA7 Emporia Armani Milan's season took off with the arrival of Daniel Hackett, one of Italy's most representative players, in terms of talent, charisma and even in terms of looks. However, the blood that flows through his veins is not just Latin of origin. I was born and raised in Italy before moving to the US uh, and uh, you know, following my dad path in, uh, in high school and uh, in university. And uh, after, after my time was done in the States, I came back, I came back overseas. There is one characteristic that Daniel possesses that makes him even more versatile. I use both hands. I mean, I, I grew up as a right-hand guy. Uh, also, when I started playing basketball, I was a right-hand shooter until I started shooting with my left. And I don't know why, maybe, maybe I saw some players that I like, maybe, I don't, maybe it was Ginobili, I don't know. Daniel made his debut in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague last year with Montepaschi Siena, and he played for the club until last December. Well, it wasn't easy because I had to make a big adjustment, uh, especially from the way I was playing. Um, in Siena, I was, I was a, a big part of, of the offense and also, uh, uh, you know, one of the leaders. Uh, coming in Milan, I had to adjust because I had so many weapons around me. But the system is similar because the coach that we have in Milan was the coach we had in Siena last year. His career is in rapid ascent and he has taken inspiration from three stars of the game. Dejan Bodiroga, his talent and his, uh, his technique was something of, of a different level. Alfonso Ford was another great scorer that, uh, that I remember from the time in Pesaro. Um, and he was, he was a force of nature. As my third, I would like to say my old teammate Bobby Brown because um, of how easy he's, he's able to score and uh, the performance that he had in, uh, in Fener, but the last season when he scored 41 points was, was something that, uh, that I witnessed next to him, so it was something that's, that stuck in my head. Three masters of the perimeter that all fit into his philosophy of the game. Guards are the ones that win basketball games. Uh, the big man can carry you for long stretches, but in the end uh, are the guards that uh, handle the ball and make the, the primary decisions. Just 48 hours after the incredible Game 1, the Mediolanum Forum homed the imminent Final Four, once again sold out for Game 2. The hosts took control from tip-off with Samardo Samuels again a key factor in the paint. The ambitions of the Israeli team were kept alive by David Blue and Alex Tyus, with Sophocles Korzanitis out injured. However, the home basket was protected by Gani Lawal. The story of the game was very similar to Game 1, however, the final outcome was different. Curtis Jarrells led EA7 Emporio Armani Milan to tie the playoff series 1-1. The American guard scored 12 of his 17 points in the second half and dished six assists, leading the home team to a 91-77 victory. Jarrells finished the match with an excellent performance index rating of 24, making him one of two MVPs in this playoff game too. We'll find out who the other is later in the show. Jarrells is now looking ahead to Game 3 in Tel Aviv, where the electric atmosphere of the Nokia Arena awaits, and they need to win. We have to. There's no, there's no option, you know what I mean? We're confident in our team, you know what I mean? we become a good road team uh, throughout the second half of the season, so we're going to go in there and play like, you know, any other night.
Galatasaray Live Hospital Istanbul opened their playoff series by visiting FC Barcelona and started strongly, pushed on by Carlos Arroyo, who took his team to a 3-12 lead. Juan Carlos Navarro responded in the first period, right before another great moment from Arroyo. It was Joey Dulce and Jacob Pullen that pulled Barcelona back into the game. Arroyo had to leave the court before the end of the first half because of injury. Then Barcelona took control thanks to top scorer Bastian Nachbar, 19 points overall, eventually winning game one by 88-61. Galatasaray Liv Hospital Istanbul guard Manukar Markoishvili has had a troubled season after suffering a long injury that forced him to stay on the sidelines for almost five months. I missed a lot not being with the team, not able to play this uh, most important part of the Euroleague games, top 16, and being able to feel this, you know, devotion. Motivation was very high because I wanted to come back as soon as possible and I want to come back for the Euroleague. In the last top 16 game, Galatasaray achieved qualification after defeating Nis Partizan Belgrade at home. That was an unforgettable moment for Manukar. That game was particular because we knew only by winning it we could go to quarterfinals. So, of course, every player just focused their mind just winning this game and uh, we made it, so we were proud for it, and uh, it's part of the history also for us. Manokar is just 27, but he started his EuroLeague career when he was 16, and has since played for many teams and for many different coaches. All of them were important, but one in particular has helped him to become the player he is today. Coach Timpieri really helped me find my, myself and find the game, so he was the, let's say, step higher that he pushed me. And he tried to push me even one more higher, so that's what I'm trying right now. Carlos Arroyo was still out for game two. The Blaugrana took an early advantage, going up with Costas Papa Nicolau. Again, Papa Nicolau dunked to increase the gap, and the first half ended 43-25. Without their leader, the Turkish team couldn't hold off their opponents in the second half, and so Barcelona won game two, 84-63. Eleven months after their title game, Real Madrid and Olympiacos Pireos met each other again in the playoff series in the Spanish capital. The home team soon took the lead, ending the first period up 27-12. Reigning champions responded with their leader Vasilis Panoulis until they tied 40-40. Sergio Rodriguez started the decisive break, which was then increased and completed in the second half by Rudy Fernandez, the top scorer with 20 points, giving Real Madrid a 1-0 lead in the series after this 88-71 win. This is definitely one of the most famous shots in the history of the Euroleague. A shot that won the 2012 title game. This shot belonged to Georgios Printezis, a star who needs no further introduction. This shot was in no way improvised. It is unique and very personal to him. 
Maybe they remember this because of the sad and instable that uh, because it was the last sad. It's like a flutter, but okay, maybe the way that I do it, it's maybe angry a little bit. I think from when I was young, I called sad like that, so I work on it and I feel comfortable. So maybe it's my favorite move, so I try to continue to do that. Since storming to two consecutive titles, everybody is wondering what is the secret to Olympiakos Pirel's success. One of these is probably the fact that in a 12-man roster, there has always been also a large majority of Greek players. It's very important to its country to have players from, uh, from their country, so on the bad moments, uh, everybody we are together, we know what uh, what the fault is, and uh, we have more team spirit. Making it to the top is hard, but what is even harder is to stay there. Georgios knows that there is only one formula for this. I never was the, the big talented player, but uh, every day I work very hard, especially the summer. I never stop, I never go for vacation, and uh, I try year by year to win my position because from young guy, I was playing in a very big team like Olympiacos and always I had players in front of me. To win the respect and the, from, 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 from my coach, I have to work more, maybe double times from the others. I saw what is uh, my weaknesses, I tried to improve it and I was focused 100% from what I need to do to try to be in the highest level. Georgios is 30 and he has already played 11 EuroLeague seasons. However, in 2007, he was drafted by the NBA. I was very young. I went to first time I went out of Europe. Nobody told me that in the draft I have to, to wear a jacket or I have to be, you know, good. One hour before the draft starts, one guy told me, where are you going like this? What do you think you are? And I tried to find the last 20 minutes, I tried to find a jacket a jacket, in, uh, in the New York City. Then I took a bicycle with one Chinese guy and uh, everybody was coming with the limousines and everybody with the big cars and I was with a bike last time with a jacket on my head to, <laughs> to celebrate this event, you know. It was strange feelings, you know. Game two was extremely close until the very end. Real Madrid tried to open up a gap on more than one occasion, but failed to break away as the Reds demonstrated their fighting spirit. Ioannis Borussis led the way for the home team and finished the night as MVP of the playoffs game two as he collected 19 points plus 10 rebounds to lead Los Blancos to an 82-77 victory. He shot seven of 10 inside the arc, one of three behind the three-point stripe and two for three from the free throw line in addition to one assist and three drawn fouls. Borussis and Curtis Jarrells become the first players to share MVP honours in the playoffs since 2010. Seska Moscow and Panathinaikos Athens renewed their long-term rivalry when they faced each other in Game 1 of the playoffs. The home team, led by Sonny Weems, took an early advantage, later increased by Vladimir Mitov. However, the Greens came back, thanks to their leader Dimitris Diamantidis, who gave them the lead with four minutes left. Sunny Weems kept the Russian team in touch. In the last minute, James Giss scored but missed the and one to take Panathinaikos up by three, which allowed Carl Hines to force overtime from the line. 
both teams played with control, and again it was Heinz that gave Seska the lead. Then, game one was decided when Diamantidis missed the chance to force a second overtime, handing Ettore Messina's team the win, 77-74. The day you start playing basketball can be considered a lucky day. Normally this occurs for no reason in particular, just to have fun, to stay together, and it's also a way to learn a little discipline. It is a road that many have been down, even Jonas Masulis, Panathinaikos Athens forward. Career started when I was uh, seven and a half years in Arvido Sabonis basketball school. Uh, my parents brought me to this school just because I was uh, too active, too naughty boy. <laughs> you know, it was too much. So <laughs> they decided me to put me in some kind of sport, uh, just you know, to let my energy you know, to go away because I was too naughty. After practices, when you go home, you're a little bit relaxed, you have more concentration on, on school, on homework, you know, it helped, helped me. At 29, Jonas Masulis is playing his eighth EuroLeague season, his second with the Greens. Thanks to his experience and to his quick hands, he has become one of the best stealers of the competition. This part of the game and uh, when we are trying to play hard defense, you know, and it's this, these things happen to me more often, a little bit, but sometimes you, you steal a ball just by accident, you know. But. Steals, something that requires a player to always be in the right place at the right time and to never hold back. I am always in the middle of a fight for every rebound, for every loose ball, for everything, and to help team as, as I can. Since the arrival of Fragiscos Albertis on the bench, Jonas and his teammates had to change their way of playing. The most important thing the new coach brought in this team, team is uh, self-confidence. He led us to play a little bit more free. Now we put more speed, more pressure on ball. Normally the playoffs is no time to joke around, but Jonas likes to remember something that happened a few months ago. My parents supposed to come like before New Year to visit me and I forgot to lock my car and James Giss just put my seat down everything and I then came, came uh, I was late to the airport and I have to fix my car and uh, you know, we, we joke in this way but okay after I got him too. <laughs> Game two, Seska Moscow found the first significant break in the middle of the second period, when they placed a lethal 16-0 partial run, taking the score to 35-19. With the game practically on ice for Seska, Jeremy Pargo decided to astonish the crowd with this attempt, unfortunately ruled out. In the second half, Seska maintained a good distance, Above all, thanks to Sonny Weems, their best scorer with 23 points, and went on to win 77-51 to take a 2-0 lead in the series. Now let's check out the top three plays from Game 1. Number three, Madrid, Spain. Real Madrid with possession, they're going to kick it back to Rudy Fernandez. Here comes Rudy, floats up the pass, and Marcus Slaughter goes up high, throws down the alley oop. Inventive pass from Rudy Fernandez. The decisive finish from Marcus Slaughter. Number two, Barcelona, Spain. Jacob Pullen in charge of the Barcelona offense, looking for the pick and roll. Now he throws it up, and Joey Dorsey times his leap. Thrills the Palau Blaugrana crowd with an alley oop dunk. Picture perfect from Barcelona. Number one, Milan, Italy. Overtime between EA7 and Maccabi. Tyrese Rice floats it up. Alex Tyres makes an incredible leap, forcing down the stunning one-handed alley-oop jam. Maccabi Electra, Tel Aviv. And this is what delighted the crowd in game two. Number three, Barcelona, Spain. The home team easing to a big win. Victor Sada makes the steal, drives down court, sends it up, and Alex Abrines 
finishes the high-flying alley-oop slam led by the pass from Sutter. Number two, Milan, Italy. Game one, MVP. Ricky Hickman tries to score, but Gani Lawal has other ideas going up so high to make the block. Number one from Madrid, Spain. Real Madrid possession, but Marty Collins with a classy steal, and now he dribbles, bounces in the pass, and Brent Petway finishes with the dunk. Collins started it off. Nice pass, great finish. Brent Petway. Presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport.